Hi, today we'll be coding some icons like these ones in a really compact manner. So let's get started. We already have the array of colors and the array of color indices. And now we're going to get the length of this array. So um, length. Okay, and now we're going to have a loop. So for i going from 0 all the way up to n, increment it, and then, okay, I should have uh, written i there, okay, yeah, I can't type, what else is new, and here in the style attribute, uh, we'll be setting a few things, so, um, um, we'll have the array of indices at index i, and map this, so, uh, the current, uh, item and the current index and this is going to map to uh, this is going to be the custom property and it's going to use the index j and it's going to put the color at k and then we're going to join this array okay and this should give us what we want so we have these icon elements and we have the first color, second color, third color. Okay, that's perfect. We can move on to the CSS. So now that we've done this, we're going to have an inner diameter. And let's say this is going to be something like 2.5 ohms. Uh, we're going to have um, a gap and this is going to be, uh, we're going to use the padding for this. Let's say it's going to be 0.25 ohms and we're going to have a border and let's say this is going to be two M's. So for our icon elements, uh, they're going to have a width equal to that inner diameter, a height uh, equal to that same inner diameter, um, padding, okay, uh, we're going to have a border solid okay and we're also going to give them a background which is uh, that uh, first color okay let's also set a border radius 50 percent now the next uh, thing we want here is a gradient so um, this is not going to be a linear one, it's going to be a conic one, uh, but we don't have autocomplete for conic. So um, we're going to have the second color. Okay, and this is going to go up uh, to an angle mm, 225 degrees, I don't know. So yeah, up to that angle. And then we're going to have transparent. Okay, and this is going to be border box so that it looks nicely. Uh, and then we're going to have a radial gradient. Uh, closest side, we don't have autocomplete for this either. Um, the third color. Okay, and this goes up to 100%, and then we're going to have transparent calc 100% plus one pixel. Um, this is going to be content box. Right, so something like this. And uh, then we're going to have um, a fill gradient, and this is going to be a linear gradient red and red and for a mask we'll be using this and first we're going to have border box and then we're going to have padding box now for now this doesn't do anything because they're both uh, uh, they have an alpha of one everywhere and they just overlap so there is uh, nothing to mask. Masks uh, in CSS are alpha masks, so yeah. But if we use mask composite and we use exclude, uh, 
then the parts that are common, they're going to get excluded. And if we have one more like this, except uh, with uh, content, then we're going to have that gap right there. Now let's do something in terms of layout before uh, we take care of that uh, rounding. So let's say display grid, uh, we're going to have margin zero, uh, make this full height, uh, have a background, uh, grid, template columns, uh, repeat, auto fit. Again, something we don't have uh, um, auto complete for. So then we're going to have the inner diameter plus twice uh, the padding and the border. Now having done this, we're going to have grid gap, let's say 1M. Okay, and um, place content center. Okay, now um, I think we can just uh, collapse the body because we won't be needing it anymore. And uh, let's uh, move on to more interesting things. So we're going to have a radial gradient uh, and it's going to be a circle at uh, 50%, uh, let's compute the radius of that uh, rounding, and this is going to be half the border. So, uh, okay, we're going to have uh, color 1, uh, and it's going to go up to the radius. Then we're going to have transparent, and it can be up to nothing, uh, but uh, we're going to get a jagged edge. So to fix that, it's going to be a uh, calc, calc, um, the radius, which we need to interpolate inside the calc, plus one pixel. Now having done this, okay, we have a nice rounding. And uh, something else we can do is transform, rotate, let's say, minus 140 degrees, something like that. Okay, now having done this, we're going to have a second such radial gradient. Okay, uh, except we're going to need to compute the position there. And to do that, we're going to need trigonometric functions. So we need to import compass. So import compass. Oh yeah, um, this means uh, uh, we need to stop compass from taking these as uh, the compass gradient functions. And yeah, I'll link to an article where I explain this in detail. So having done this here, I'm uh, going to have calc. So this is the middle position, plus uh, the radius is going to be 50% minus that uh, radius, the rounding radius. So, um, okay, um, this I also need to interpolate. It's going to be cosine of, um, we need to compute the current angle. This is going to be our angle minus 90 degrees. Uh, because the computation for the position starts at three o'clock, and the conic gradient starts at uh, 12 o'clock. So there's a 90 degree uh, difference, which we need to subtract there. So uh, that's the deal. So having done this, we're going to have something similar for the second coordinate. Except this is going to be a uh, sine instead of cosine. So yeah, uh, this does it. This is what I wanted to show you for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, if you like the work that I'm putting out for eight years and a half now, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. The link is going to be in the description. Or you can get me something off my Amazon wishlist. Again, the links are going to be in the description. Or you can at least share this to show the role what can be done with CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and until next time.